Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing you another action figure review. Today we're going to be looking at the NECA King Kong action figure. Now King Kong is a pretty cool design. He's had a ton of different incarnations and films over the years. I don't think this is from any specific version. They made just a generic or general King Kong figure. I imagine a lot of people are going to get this to pair up with their NECA Godzilla figures. I personally don't collect the NECA Godzilla figures, but I could definitely use a gorilla in my action figure world. This guy could be Gorilla Grodd to fight against Flash, could be an escape gorilla from the zoo, just all kind of different uses I can find for this guy. So let's go ahead and check out the packaging here. See at the front, he's screaming, looks like he's got some bloody battle damage on him. King Kong at the top, King Kong, warning, NECA. One side, here he is, King Kong below that. Other side, pretty much same thing, maybe a different head there. At the bottom, there is a barcode, in case that helps anybody, as well as a bunch of credits. On the back, here he is, beating his chest. A couple different poses from him. Now, I got my figure from Amazon.com. A new Predator figure is in stock, and I grabbed King Kong at the same time to save on shipping. But funny enough, I actually saw this at Walmart yesterday, so keep checking your targets at Walmarts. He is out and about. This is one of NECA's ultimate figures. It's in the window box packaging. You can hear the Velcro open up on the inner flap. Here is the gorilla, King Kong, just standing there looking very menacing. I mean, look at those teeth. And here he is in the package. Looks like we've got an alternate head, an alternate pair of hands, and a big, super articulated gorilla. So no further ado, let's open him up. All right, now that we got this figure out of the package, here he is with all of his accessories laid out. He doesn't come with any traditional accessories, just some extra body parts. He's got two alternate hands, totaling four interchangeable hands. And he's got one additional head, totaling two heads. Now, before we look at the accessories, let's talk about and check out the actual figure. So I can think of about four different reasons people might buy this figure, and I'm sure there are other reasons. Number one, obviously to use as King Kong. Number two, to use as a generic gorilla in your action figure world. Number three, to use as Gorilla Grodd in your DC world. And then number four, possibly to use with your NECA Planet of the Apes collection. So let's go ahead and check out the figure. Here is King Kong in the flesh. Face sculpt looking great, mouth wide open, the teeth, you can even see kind of the roof of the mouth. His eyes, they look a little surprised, look a little wonky there. Looks like he's got a little blood on his face. He's got some damage on his chest. I probably would have preferred him not to be damaged, but it's all good. It looks great. The texture on his fur, the sculpt looks nice. Got it brown dark brown black different shades all going through there really like what I'm seeing so far looks like he's got double jointed elbows double jointed knees he should be able to beat his chest like a gorilla really hoping that's the case liking the detail so far another nice NECA figure and then here's the figure broken down as far as he can go with all of his removable parts detached. Now let's check out his accessories and let's start off with his hands. Here he is with his fisted hands. First question I had for this figure, can he beat his chest with his fists? And you know what? He sure can. Works out pretty good. You can see he can definitely touch the plastic there. Very nice indeed. And here he is with his other pair of hands. I'm going to describe these as grabbing hands. You should be able to hold something with these, maybe climb with these, or grab, possibly even choke something. Now let's check out his accessories, and let's start off with his hands. Here he is with his fisted hands. First question I had for this figure, can he beat his chest with his fists? And you know what? He sure can. Works out pretty good. You can see he can definitely touch the plastic there. Very nice indeed. And here he is with his other head. This is his angry head, or maybe I should say his angrier head. 
Both the heads look angry if the mouth open, but this one is screaming or growling. Looking pretty good. It's got the same kind of eyes. Can't see them too good. Not too different. Nose looks pretty similar. Got the bowel damage here too. Mouth open. He is yelling. He's enraged. It looks really good. See his tongue. See his teeth. The roof of the mouth. The back of the mouth. A lot of detail there. I'm really liking what I'm seeing so far. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now let's check out the height of this guy. From bottom to top, he's sitting at about 8.25 inches tall, which is going to translate to about 21 centimeters. Now let's check out this guy's articulation. And I will say, this guy's joints were really tight when I first got him, so I ended up giving him a hot water bath to loosen some stuff up, and it sure did work. He's a lot looser than he was before. I couldn't get his fists to hit on his chest, but I can sure do so now. So let's go ahead and start off with his head here. His head can rotate around like so. It can actually also rotate the traditional fashion. He can look up about that far, down about that far. So his head, it's on a ball joint here, so it can rotate all around, but the ball itself can rotate at the base, giving him a very large range of motion with his head here, which is pretty nice. You can see, he can just do a lot of stuff. Shoulders also on ball joints, they can go out about 90 degrees, maybe a hair less. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows, they can go in about that far. They can rotate at the top, and they can also rotate at the bottom. His wrist can rotate around, and it's going to be hinged as well. He's got this sort of ball joint, his torso area, which gives you an incredible range of motion there. can go from side to side, go back about that far and forward, just allowing him to do a whole lot. Legs on ball joints, they can go out about that far. They can swivel a little bit independently of those ball joints. Go forward about that much, back about that much. It's got double jointed knees, back about that far. They can rotate at the top a little bit and the bottom as well. Foot here, so I can go in and out just a little bit there, but it can also tilt, rock, rotate quite a bit. Here's King Kong climbing a skyscraper in my action figure city, holding a woman, getting to the top. Here he is, beating his chest with his fists. Here he is, being fired upon by the military, getting ready to throw some pieces of the building at them. Here he is, as Gorilla Grodd, trying to grab the flash, but just not fast enough. Here he is, in just absolute gorilla heaven. Here he is, kind of walking on his hind legs and his knuckles as well. Next, let's check him out, compared with some other action figures. Here he is, next to a DC Direct Justice Gorilla Grodd figure. Here he is, next to a couple of NECA Gorilla Aliens. Here he is, next to a Mattel DC Universe Classics Flash figure. This gorilla is quite a bit larger than him and would work great for Gorilla Grodd. He should work great with the upcoming McFarlane Flash as well. Now, let's check him out, compared with some action figures from different various companies, to see how he fits in both scale and style-wise, in case you want to know which lines you can mix him with. Here he is with some of his NECA brothers. This guy is definitely not to scale with them, as King Kong was huge, but for my personal action figure uses, I would prefer to be this size with my action figure collection. Then, here he is with some DST, or Diamond Select toys. And here he is, next to some McFarlane toys. Now, next to some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. Then, next to some Mattel wrestling figures. And here he is, next to some Mezco 112th cloth soft goods action figures. Then, next to some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. And here, with some Mafex figures. Then, next to some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here he is, next to some SH Figure Arts action figures. 
And finally, here he is with some Jazzwares Fortnite figures. So overall, this is a pretty solid action figure. His sculpt is excellent. His paint job is crisp. I see no blemishes. His articulation is pretty good. Very pleased with that. I can see myself getting a lot of use with him in my DC action figure world. And I can also see myself getting some use in my general 1 12th scale overall action figure world. Pretty cool they made a King Kong, but he actually scales up with your 7 inch action figures. For my use, that gives him two thumbs up. If I were to rate this guy, I'd give him a solid 7.5 out of 10. He definitely has a nice home with my other figures. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add it to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.